Hello everyone. My name is Eva Musby. My aim here is to give you some very practical support if you're the parent of a child or a young person suffering from anorexia. What I'd like to offer you right now is a few very practical tips to help you support your child to eat a meal. In order to do that, I'm going to invite you to go bungee jumping. The idea is to get you suitably terrified because I propose that the main emotion that your child is experiencing when you ask him or her to eat is terror. It's anxiety, it's fear, probably mixed with some utter disgust as well. So how can you best support your child to eat in spite of the fear? Now let's imagine that you have to go on a bungee jump and you have an instructor whose job it is to help you actually take the jump. Now there are many things that this instructor can do to make your job harder and many things they can do to make it easier. I'm going to concentrate on just one right now and that's the use of logic. The reason I'm choosing to talk about logic is that it's a very common trap for us parents at the dinner table. So, your child asks about calories and you start giving a lecture about metabolism, the energetic needs of the brain, how the body needs fuel. And your child says, but all I've done is sit here all day. And you say, ah, but do you know how much energy the body burns just by being awake? You need calories for this and for that. And you get the drift. So, let's see what would happen if you're on this bungee jump and your instructor goes, go on, take your jump. And you go, how do I know that the cord won't break? And your instructor brings out a whiteboard and gives you a mathematical formula involving Young's modulus of elasticity and explains to you how, by dividing the tensile stress by the tensile strain in the elastic, you get a stress-strain curve, which proves that there is absolutely no way that with this particular cord it would ever break. And then you say, yeah, but what about the clips? How do I know that the clips won't break? And on and on it goes. So by giving you a logical explanation, your instructor has only raised more questions. And all that's happening is you're spending even longer looking into the void and hoping to delay the moment at which you'll need to jump. What would be far more reassuring and much more likely to work is for your instructor to exude a sense of utter confidence and competence so that you just look at them and you know you're safe. And if you start asking questions, they go, hey, I'm an expert. I know this is all right. On you go. You're perfectly safe. Trust me. Now, there are good reasons why logic doesn't work when somebody is full of anxiety. When you are scared, there is one area in your brain, which is called the limbic area, which kicks in. Its job is to do fight, flight or freeze. It doesn't do thinking, it doesn't do rational, it doesn't do logic. This may help you understand why, on the whole, with anorexia, there is very little link to the rational and so I suggest that when you next try a meal and your child asks you a lot of questions which you are tempted to respond to with a lecture, you take a breath and you think, trust. You embody trust. You are a trustworthy parent and you know that your child is safe eating. And you say, trust me, you need this food. It's safe. And then you wait and then you watch for a sign of relaxation. Does your child look just a little bit more ready to eat as they think, maybe, maybe this is okay? If your child is still not eating, you can say, go on, pick up your fork, have a bite. You can trust me. This is safe. And then your child might say, how do you know it's safe? You've not even weighed it. You've not even measured it. You've not even counted the calories. And, and what's all this fat there on the side? How do you know it won't make me fat? And you go... I know about these things. Trust me, this is exactly what you need. I'm an expert. Have a bite. Go on, have a bite now. It's safe. Now, this is not the only tool to help you get your child to eat. There are many, many more. But the general principle is there that if you can help reduce your child's anxiety, you have better chances to help him or her eat in spite of a certain level of fear.
So I propose that you try it at the next meal time, and I wish you the very, very best. <laughs>